Well, we had, um, we've got some few minutes left here to talk about some lawn issues. Mitchell, if you would like to kind of usher us in to uh, a few of the lawn questions that we had, um, I would, I would love that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Mitchell Moat. I'm an ag agent here in Rutherford County. I guess we'll start with a question. I think it was from Knox County. Um, if I recall the details there, the, uh, uh, the the person that indicated they were trying to get their lawn up and go and get it started. Um, they had uh, so they had red clay soil. Um, they had some uh, moon grass and some other. I think they used the term invasive weeds. And just uh, wanted uh, some comments made about weed control, uh, et cetera, and what they should do. So in answering this question, I did make uh, an assumption. And if I made the wrong assumption, then the answer is totally wrong. Because the assumption was, I thought, well, you probably don't want the Bermuda grass, or at least that's why I took it. Um, but uh, if they didn't want Bermuda grass, then this answer would probably not be the best answer uh, for them. Um, you blow that picture up, you can look at it, and you can identify it. Several different weeds in there. They got some crabgrass, uh, some prostrate spurge, what looked like possibly some patches of Dallas grass out in out in the existing turf that's out there right now. Um, some uh, dandelion and maybe some some plantain uh, that can be picked out of that that mass. So from a weed control standpoint, you know it would be uh, it'd be tough, I guess, to uh, have a single herbicide or a, a good mixture that was going to control. The grasses, you know, selective products that control the grasses and also control in the broadleaf weeds. Um, so it, it's going to be a little bit, a little bit difficult, I guess, to do weed control uh, to, to get all those things. And let me back up by saying that, you know, that this is not, this does not appear to be a brand new uh, bill. So it's an existing turf that trying to want to improve it. So I'm thinking a renovation versus an establishment project here, and and so. When you're thinking about renovation, you've got a couple of options. You know, you can have just a renovation uh, where you overseed to just thicken up a thinned out stand of existing turf, or and, and, and you're going to choose that option when you've got probably some of the neighborhood of 50% of the ground covered with desirable grass plants. If you if you have less than 50% of the ground cover in desirable plants, then that's a candidate for a total renovation where you would, you know, just kill all the existing vegetation there and start over. So, you know, from a uh, from a uh, uh, just a, a minor renovation standpoint, overseeing standpoint, what you might think about doing, you know, if, if this fits your circumstance, um, you might think about doing uh, some weed control to take out some of that existing weed pressure. And an option to do that, instead of trying to use a selective or some selective herbicide products, is to spot spray those patches of weeds uh, that are out there in the turf with a non-selective product such as glyphosate, uh, which will you know kill those existing grasses as well as broadleaf weeds, and then come back you know once those plants have died, uh, the weed patches have died, and and maybe some, use a tool something like an overseed or a, sl or a slit seeder. Uh, they're available uh, to rent from most uh, power equipment rental stores. That's a really good tool to use to intercede into an existing turf. It acts kind of like a little miniature no-till drill, I guess, because it uh, uh, those tools they cultivate the ground by uh, those vertical blades uh, cutting slits into the ground and also drop seeds, plant seeds down into that exposed ground. And that's just a good way to add uh, seed into an existing turf to, to thicken it up. You know, I assume. Uh, if they don't want the butter grass, then looking at the cool sitting grass and probably tall fescue. And so the, the window, uh, the preferred window for seeding or interseeding those uh, cool seeding grasses like tall fescue is that September to mid October time frame. So you're coming up just right on. Uh, you know, you would probably pick out your seeding date and then back up three weeks or so from that, do your weed control so the weeds would be under control, they'd be out of the way uh, when you got ready to do your overseed. Now, if, if you don't have 50% uh, uh, of the ground covered with desirable plants. Then you're talking about a total renovation, uh, and that's where you would, you know, treat the existing area or the existing ground cover with a non-selective product, again, something like glyphosate, and, and kill that existing vegetation. Time frame would be the same if you're looking at planting a cool sitting grass. Uh, you know, choose your, you know, pick out your target planting date uh, in that September, mid October time frame. Come back three weeks or so prior to that and do the treatment with, uh, uh, with, with glyphosate product, kill existing vegetation, and and then you come in and do your uh, uh, you know you do your seed and introduce the desirable 
uh, turf species into into the lawn area. Now, it's in, in different ways about going about that, I guess, as far as the planting process. Now, you mentioned you had to explain soil. So this, if you do a total renovation, here's an opportunity to maybe introduce some organic matter into that ground to uh, uh, add some organic matter, improve the tilt of the soil, and so on. And option, one way to do that, okay, so let's say you do a total renovation to kill everything out there. All right, then you come along and you just uh, uh, core aerate very aggressively and you put a lot of perforations in the soil, put a lot of plugs out. And then come back with maybe, you know, like a half inch layer of, uh, uh, of compost, a half inch deep layer of compost and, and broadcast that, that out over the uh, uh, the existing or, or the area there where you aerated it. And then maybe rake it back and forth or drag it a little bit to help move that compost down into uh, down into the aeration holes to add some organic matter into that soil. Uh, then you come along with uh, you know your slit seed and intercede in there. Uh, you you could uh, uh, you could do the uh, the aeration, then the slit seed, and then broadcast uh, broadcast the uh, compost over that. So that kind of like a mulch to help hold the uh, uh, hold some moisture around the seeds, hold them in place. That's just a good way to add some organic matter into that exi- that that upper soil surface to maybe help improve that a little bit. Um, but you know, again, I would. I don't know your. I don't know your details there. I don't know your specifics or what your what what your goals are necessarily. So I would encourage contacting the Knox County Extension Office and talking to one of your ag agents there, uh, and maybe go into a little more depth and detail uh, about what you want to do, and maybe get um, uh, some some specific recommendations for your particular uh, for your particular situation. I did put a couple of links there in the. Uh, you know, the resources, one uh, from a weed control standpoint, a uh, link to the mobile weed manual, and also UT Hort link uh, under the uh, uh, turf grass uh, uh, resource uh, panel there in UT Hort. You can find a lot of publications from uh, uh, relating to establishing grass and planting grass and getting ready to plant and set those kind of things. Ooh, good answer. Turf is always complicated, isn't it? <laughs> with with the last few minutes that we have, I really want to uh, bring up the topic of fall army worms, and I feel like we just need to touch on that for just a few minutes. Um, they aren't out with full force just yet in home lawns, but I know uh, here specifically in West Tennessee, we've had several counties who've reported them in hay fields, young soybean fields, and and you know, so we just need to be vigilant, be on the lookout. Uh, if you start seeing browning of your Bermuda and Zoysia lawns, uh, they tend to prefer those warm season grasses, uh, then, you know, that can be a sign that you need to go out and really um, be vigilant and see if you see those worms creepy crawling. Um, they're not worms, they're caterpillars <laughs> uh, crawling across your turf. Uh, who else wants to add? What are some other things folks need to be like on the lookout for as far as army worms go? Have, I mean, have y'all had reports of them, I guess, in your in your areas, other areas of the state, I guess is my question. I think we've seen some damage of some. I haven't seen them in person yet. Okay. Yeah, I haven't seen anything that we thought was army worm damage. Nobody reported such a thing until I see them. And right. the one thing that they're gonna do, they're gonna target the the more intense management that you've got in that turf the more lush that grass is the more uh it's going to be on target or on their yeah. radar typically the old weedy seedy not very attractive lawn uh, uh won't show much damage but if you've got a, a turf that you've spent a lot of money on and uh, done a really nice job of maintaining the fertility those will be the ones that they'll tend to target first. Good point. They like they like those lush lawns, right? So mm-hmm. if you're like me and you're just kind of discarding your lawn, then maybe you won't get as much damage. <laughs> Celeste, I did want to make a comment about what Mitchell was talking about. And this kind of goes with the whole theme of what we've talked about today in terms of raising our threshold of insect damage and stuff. One thing I would tell homeowners, whether it's in a lawn or your garden, uh, first thing, focus on growing rather than killing. And with growing, you know, your soil fertility, plant selection, correct environment, if it's a turf mowing height, all those things that will allow that plant 
an opportunity to be successful and grow healthy and do what we wanted to do. And then as a, uh, through all those selections and our management practices and everything, we need to look at chemistry as kind of the last result and a supplement to maybe controlling those weeds and things like that. So I think a lot of times as homeowners, we think first about killing, but a lot of times when we kill those weeds in the lawn, we're going to have spots where other weeds will come back or you know, maybe we impact the environment in different uh, ways. So focus first on growing and the health of plants and then transition to using those chemistries uh, to other things. Uh, that, that's, one, a good, that's a good like point. That. I just wanted to throw in real quick, going back to when we were talking about that Black-Eyed Susan and raising your aesthetic threshold, armyworm feeding is not going to kill your Bermuda lawn. So just because you see some browning out and you see some damage doesn't necessarily mean you have to apply an insecticide to control them um, because we still have a long growing season. That Bermuda is likely to flush back out on its own before we get another um, freeze. And even if it didn't, those roots are still intact. They're feeding on the leaf blades, not the leaf root and uh, not the grass roots. So, um, you know, just if you have a, a highly maintained lawn and you've got a lot invested in it, yes, of course, I understand, you know, your desire to control them. And we've posted uh, two good publications that are going to help you with um, product selection for that. But not every, you know, situation is going to um, insist, institute uh, control for armyworms for sure, specifically. Yay. One, one last thing. This is a shameless plug for Cumberland County. Everybody listening needs to put down Tuesday, August 29th on their calendar for the Fall Gardeners Festival here at the Plateau. There you go, Seth, for the Plateau uh, Research uh, Education Research Center. Uh, we It should be bigger and better this year. We've even expanded the number of speakers that we've got. You don't have to register, but we encourage everybody to go online and register. You can go to our um, the, the UT uh, Plateau Research and Education Center website or our Master Gardener website, hit the links and pre-register for those. So you can pick your bag up without signing anything. But August 29th, it's always the last Tuesday in August, and we hope to have a big group of uh, participants there to enjoy the program. We are bringing a whole charter bus full of excited gardeners up to Crossville from West Tennessee. So yay, we're super, super excited. Over here. <laughs> and and over here. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great day. In fact, a huge number of us are gonna be there. So it'll be all kinds of fun. There may be microgreens, I hear. Mm, possibly. Well, I thank you all for your time. I hope you've learned a lot. And I want to ask you all to keep sending in those questions. Um, we have one more office hours to go for this year. Scheduled, scheduled office hours. Okay, for it's September. Um, so we've had a, a great run. We're looking forward to doing it again next month. I know it's still hot out there, but we can make it, y'all. We can hang in and finish out summer strong. So thanks for being here with us, and we'll see y'all soon.